everybody. I am Carrie the Mortician, and we're here with Brian and Ryan for Undertaking the Podcast, a podcast all about funeral things. Got your formaldehyde, got formaldehyde, or your formaldehyde, as I read it. So we're here. We drink a beer. We discuss a topic that the guys have no idea I'm going to throw at them. So today, I'm going to bring up a topic from my second favorite podcast, Crime Junkie. I was listening to the other day. It is literally, I'm obsessed with it. It's, it's really kind of sick how often I listen to it. Um, but I get thrown this question, actually, about a case that they discussed and some of my input on it. And I listened to it yesterday and I was like, okay, I have to talk to the guys about this one. And I want them to share their input as well so we can all collectively give a good answer. So Kendrick Johnson, are you guys familiar with this story at all? No. Okay. So back in 2013, he was found rolled up inside a gymnasium mat in Georgia at a wrestling school. Mat. Uh, yes. Well, a gymnastics or wrestling mat. And so the story was that he went in needed to get a pair of gym shoes that he stored in the gymnasium because they charged to use lockers. And so he said, we're going to just store this pair of shoes. I don't have to pay them for a locker. And they had rolled up mats or something. He was going to get a shoe, went down to get it inside the mat, got stuck. They found him the next day dead. So they originally said it was positional asphyxiation. And they did an autopsy, you know, looked into everything, have all these crime scene photos, but they like found him and they didn't call the police right away. Like there's all these open links, all these red flags to this case. So they did, he went to the funeral home. They had, they had him buried. They redid an autopsy later though, because all this stuff came out because there was too many questions, too many variables. Why this? Why that? How could a kid with 19 inch wide shoulders fit in a 14 inch rolled up mat and all these things. So what people question is when they did re autopsied and they exhumed him, he had newspaper in his cavity oh. and everybody was questioning, why does this kid have newspaper in his cavity and his internal organs were missing, gone, not in the casket. So I have been asked about this because obviously everybody's like, well, maybe the funeral director did something, you know, wrong and blah, blah, blah. And I think we have obvious answers that we would answer on this. Um, but I thought I would bring up this case to you to talk about. And it's still unresolved from what I have, you know, I can't find any resolve to this. They still have not found that anybody was, you know, at fault. They did rule it that it wasn't a natural or an accidental death. They think that there's something happened. They think somebody crushed him with a weight or something here and then threw him in because there, is some, there was some thoracic damage. Um, so that's where we're at. But his parents, in trying to find what was going on, posted these horrible photos of him, severely decomposed, severely swollen, definitely skin slip going on and all these things. And so everybody thought, well, he must have been brutalized. So you guys will have to Google and look at these pictures. Kendrick Johnson. If you can't do it while we're talking, then you can give your feedback. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> Pull them up. Um, Cause it'll come <laughs> right away. Kendrick Johnson death <laughs> or something. And his parents put these pictures out so that people could see and maybe get some light on the situation. But so what is your initial thought back on newspaper in the cavity? Like, is that okay? Is that normal? What do you think about that? No, I'll, I'll take it, Ryan. No, not, not okay, not normal. Um, I have heard of funeral directors, maybe some seasoned old-time funeral directors doing this. I mean, it wasn't out of the ordinary to use a, a chemical fluid, empty chemical fluid bottle to help hold up an elbow. Sometimes when we place a deceased individual in the casket, you know, their, their elbows are going to go to where there's resistance. So a lot of times right. as funeral directors, we have to use something to prop them up. So uh, there would be, basically it's garbage. And we have been told for years, don't do it. Don't use it. Right. Use other 
things that are made for that, like styrofoam, styrofoam blocks. Um, I, I have heard the newspaper in the, the cavity. So as, as embalmers, we're going to line the cavity with an absorbent and hopefully a, uh, a, a material that's going to be kind of a powder-like substance that will have some preservative qualities, some dehydrating right. effects. And that's, that's very normal, but newspaper doesn't cut it. It's that it's almost like someone being lazy and not wanting to buy the material that is provided to us from embalming supply companies. So when I hear that, I cringe. I give that face that you're making. It's like, oh, why would someone do this? I, right. I, I've walked into a prep room before and seen newspaper on the floor of the prep room because they're using that to be absorbent. And of yeah. course, they're walking in it without booties. But I'm, I cringe at that. I cringe at that. I mean, well, when I you started... When you started with this topic, I was thinking of all the other different ways of death. I was thinking of, okay, they were being goofy and they rolled the kid up and put him in the corner and then left him and then, oh, terrible accident happened. Or maybe they were being bullies, but then you, you'd mentioned the uh, thoracic thing. And I also right. thought to myself, well, if there's no shoe at the bottom, then that shoe theory is out. But well, the when shoe was at the bottom. So here was part of it is one of the pictures that they took was this pool of blood, but the shoe was sitting on top of it clean. I see it. Oh, that ain't, that ain't right. I'm looking yeah, at it right. so Ryan's looking at the picture. So that was part of the question was, well, if the shoe is down in the tube and he's bleeding, why is there not blood on the shoe, but the blood is under the shoe? So they kind of talked through that on, um, you know, Crime Junkie. And they're like, I don't know, maybe it was stuck and then it fell out later. But everybody said, like, it, it's pretty hard to get a kid in, a, in that rolled up unless somebody maybe rolled him and then stuck him in the corner. But there was all these, you know, so much conjecture behind it because nobody knows for sure. And yeah. there was no cameras and none of this, whatever. But, um, you know, the question, you know, all the internal organs were gone. Like they weren't in the casket. They weren't even <sighs> BOG and the BOC, the bag of guts in the bottom of the casket. You know, they weren't even there. They were just literally gone. Um, yeah. and, I, and I'll, I'll touch on that just briefly. Yeah. Um, pathologists, forensic pathologists will keep small portions of brain, right. heart, lungs, liver, depending on the situation. They will keep that for later study if it's needed. Um, but generally speaking, they are always returned to the funeral director. But I do have to preface this. Sometimes they're not. I mean, we have heard situations from other embalmers where they didn't get what we call the viscera. Right. They didn't, that was not returned with the body. And if it's not there, then there, you can't put it back. Um, so that is likely, although unlikely. I have here's, what I, here's, what I would ask. here's what I would ask. What's the embalming report say? Did viscera come back or not? Did they need an embalming report? I'd have to look and see if Georgia is one of the states that even requires one. Right. But I'm, I'm just saying for, for yeah. us, it's, you know, that, that's a question that, it's a question that's on usually any embalming report, just a checkbox. Right. Well, and so. I've had a, um, a guy that works at a funeral home contact me and was like, hey, this is happening at the funeral home I'm at. What do you think about this? And he said, I tried to tell them it wasn't okay. So the guy, when an autopsy case would come in, would take the viscera and they own their own crematory. He would take the viscera, put it in with somebody else being cremated and send it off. Making so, noise over here. <laughs> like the viscera was out of play. Um, he was reporting them to the state and going to get it checked out and stuff. I was like, hello, that's not okay in any way. Like illegal, illegal. You can't dispose of internal organs like that. But so that's my, own, that was my thought as soon as I heard that was maybe they just threw them out. Maybe they cremated them with somebody else. Maybe they disposed of them because if you're going to use newspaper and maybe cut that corner, maybe you cut the corner of just throwing out the rest. So you don't have to treat them, bread them, take care of them and put them back on the deceased. That was kind of my thought on it. Was, I mean, that's a, that's a fair assessment, frankly. I mean, if you see one thing, then the next thing becomes a little more likely. Right. Talk, talk to me about the embalming or I guess not even the embalming, the decomposition photos. Cause I'm seeing a lot of photos on there that are interesting as to swelling and things like that. 
What were you, where were you going with that? So the first, there's a photo of him alive. Like there's one where there's a, a trilogy, like there's three photos. One was alive. One was after they found him. I think it's the Emmy's picture. And the other was at the funeral home that the family took, I believe. So he goes from like alive and then it's kind of the initial where he's mildly swollen. And then this next picture, he's grossly swollen. He looks like he's been dead for like weeks. I mean, it's what we know. Um, why is it telling me this is running out in 10 minutes? I don't know why it does this because we're three people talking. There should be no upgrade needed with Zoom. Come on, Zoom. If it cuts off, I'll send you a new link quickly. But so right. to me, that seemed really odd how quickly that decomposition happened. I mean, I know he was hanging upside down. There's a lot of pressure, a lot of blood. It was probably warm. Georgia is hotter than heck. And if he's inside a contained tube, possibly where there's no air conditioning, like that's going to exacerbate, especially if he's plugging the airway, there's no air movement. Like it was probably a hundred million degrees in there. So I could see that he decomposed super quickly, but it's hard to tell, I think in those situations, what may be trauma, if he's swollen from a, any kind of a beating or an injury and what could be decomposition. So yep. if I may here real quick, cause I'm flipping through these photos. I just now pulled them up yeah. and um, just bear with me here while I pull them back up. Where do they go? Of course they always leave me. Um, you know, just flipping through the photos here, um, on the photo with the wrestling mat, there's two shoes behind him at the original photo, if this is the original photo. So it's not underneath him at all. Um, looking at, there's a photo that is prior to the autopsy. This poor guy had to sit there for a minute. I mean, you know, 72 hours, I'm guessing, at the minimum. Um, yeah, I mean, but, it's horrible. But he was also upside down, too. Um, right. Um, so that decomposition all looks natural. Um, I'm looking here through the photos. I mean, it's poor guy. What? That's this sweet boy. I mean, he just, it's just a kid, man. <sighs> yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's too much. Yeah. I, I mean, the, the shoes behind him, I, I'm going to go back to the shoes here because, um, and I, and like I said, I didn't hear the crime podcast, but they were not, if he was upside down, they were not underneath him. They looked like they were thrown on him after. So that's, he had taken, I mean, it looks like, I mean, he had shoes on previously and he had to get his gym shoes to put on. Yeah. And so it looks like he had taken his gym shoes off, had gone in, you know, was in there and then somebody dumped him in. The only thing they, they conjectured that could have happened was maybe he balanced him on top he dove in and then they accidentally fell mm -hmm. in on top of him. You know, there's things you can, you can posit around all of it where yeah. you can come up with different, but I mean, his condition is just horrific. Yeah. Well, here's, the picture I'm looking at right now is from the medical examiner. And I mean, he's got swelling on his eyelids, upper lip, lower lip. It looks like he's got some type of a blister on his left cheek. I mean, yes, that, that to me means he's set for a, a little bit. Um, that's, that's he disappeared or, and they found him about 24 hours later. So he wasn't there long, but figured, do they have air conditioning? He's in a gym. He's at the bottom of this thing and it's plugged. I'm essentially thinking. So you've got heat from your body escaping. You've got the humidity and heat from Georgia and pressure for 24 hours upside down like it has to be for like michigan dead basically like a week i feel like it's got to be exponentially worse yeah but, I just, no i i don't see i don't see that i mean looking I mean, look looking back there through the shoes there were two different sets of shoes there was one mm -hmm. on him as like if you d would dive in this little tunnel yeah. It looked like they fell down on top of the back of his legs. And then there was a different colored shoe on the bottom. Like you had said, no blood on it. The blood was dripping from a hand and not necessarily from the back of the head and down the mat. Um, 
I don't know. Something's fishy to me. Um, I'm just a random guy that happens to see dead, a lot of dead people. Um, but <laughs> I, I remember this case though. I remember this case. Something, something right there. It looked, yeah. It, yeah. I don't know. It's, I don't know. It, 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 it's interesting. I mean, human, everybody, I think, you know, has at a different rate can break down depending on who they are, what ailments they have, things like that. I would say being a younger individual, um, mm -hmm. you know, a teenager, he's probably not going to have a whole lot wrong with him. Um, so, I mean, you can almost count any type of medical ailment out. I mean, I don't know his medical history, but I'm just saying, um, you know, it would almost pro probably have to be from heat or pressure. I mean, that's the only thing I can think of there. Well, that's what they said. If he got stuck, it was positional asphyxiation because he couldn't have got out. He would have essentially just died from kind of like crucifixion because crucifixion, essentially, they were hung upside down. Like the pictures were not ever correct how they showed what is fixed. I guess they usually are hung upside down and that's what causes the death in crucifixion is you suffocate because of your positioning on the cross and such um but it's not a very common death i mean i think we see it more in children like sids is now more commonly put as positional asphyxiation um, yeah. but for an adult or a you know grown child that's pretty darn uncommon to see like ever um yeah if, i mean as, as a parent i could feel their rage like oh, it's, it's, just, it's just not right well, and just to know why, like what, what, ha who took my kid's life if that's the situation and why. And, um, I think that's the spark of, well, should we look at something bad happened? Did the funeral director do something Did whatever? And I get that the, the newspaper was, I think an unfortunate, just part of the story that, and, um, they said on the podcast, well, they had donated their services. So maybe they were trying to cut corners because they had donated their services like no excuse no you you shouldn't use that stuff like you said Gar who's even taking the newspaper in 2013 come on <laughs> <laughs> it's not 2020 so they did still get newspaper back then you know a premium around here i gotta borrow it from people <laughs> i i do remember it. i do remember that case that was that was a big deal you're right it, it just went cold completely didn't it yeah but so i thought i'd bring it up see what you guys thought about it because we're all funeral directors discuss what funeral directors discuss so i don't know here, here can i say this there are there are treatments for that i mean if you're embalming correctly we've seen them we've seen oh some, yeah we'll do some things that are amazing bernie uh you know we talk about dominic uh, a, a lot we talk about carl wenzel um you know there's people that do some amazing things so right i think I, I don't know. I mean, whether it was negligence by the funeral director or not, I don't know. But there's still ways to fix things. Brian and I have had cases like this we've worked together on um, with, with more swelling than, than that. And we're able to bring some things down. But, you know, um, natural form sometimes, depending on the tragedy, can be hard to get to. Very much. Very much. Well, and you wonder if maybe the pathologist why they didn't see things the first time versus the second time, you know, maybe who knows? There's so many questions that we can't know because we're just throwing out, you know, whatever pops in our head on it. But well, no, nothing ever came of this then it, it's an unsolved or, or was it case closed? He, he had crawled in there. No. So I think what kind of finally the last that has really been talked unless something new came out, I really couldn't find was somebody came forward with a story that saw another student had said they smashed him in the chest thoracic area with a weight. So that's kind of where that came, story came from, but nothing has, could be proven. There's no, there's nothing they can do to like get anybody for it. There's some video, but there's nothing in the gym. There's nothing that they can get anything. It's kind of stuck unless somebody new comes forward or something new comes forward, somebody has a deathbed confession or, you know, something that's just where they're at. So. Man, that's crazy. It's tragic. I, yeah. I, yeah. I didn't know you were going that deep tonight, but that's fine. Well, we're deep. We're deep. How amazing though. I, I remember that case. Boy, yeah. that brings back some, you know, a moment in time. Wow. Yeah.
Well, thank you guys for discussing. Check out making the podcast. Bring more topics to us to discuss. If you want funeral director side of things, bring them on over to Ryan, Brian, and Carrie the Mortician. We'll see you guys on the next one. Bye. Thank you, girlfriends.